Hi, welcome to my playhouse and today we are going to do a very dirty server hack because I got a very good question in the comments on my favorite server of all time which is of course the IBM X3650 Model 1 and the question is can I put in an internal disk in that server? By that he didn't mean internal disks that you can take out from the front here he meant a disk like a solid state hard drive to put inside of the server my first answer was yes of course there's a connection for it right in there there is like a SATA port for it and um, well yeah he has already gotten that far and uh, found that connection and that was okay but there was actually no power cables inside of the server so that was where the problem was there is actually some power connections inside of the server but they are not very normal we're gonna go have a look at those and then um, i'm just gonna remove some of these papers these are the ibm 3650 and it has room for six hard drives here is six drives you can put those in and it supports up to two terabytes two terabytes hitachi drive so the server can uh, go up to about 12 terabytes of storage it would be very cool to put a like an SSD inside to have it boot on its own boot drive and just have 12 terabytes of storage. That would be neat. This is what this is all about. We're gonna try and see if we can do that. If, if this doesn't work, you won't be watching this. So, so very apparently I got this working because otherwise I'm just gonna delete this film. I have brought my spare 3650 model one into the living room because it's nice and cozy in here and it's actually quite cold outside in the server room right now. I'm not having enough things running. Let's go into the server and see what we are talking about. And the very first thing we see is that up here down there is a SATA connection. Right here is a SATA connection. It's it's more or less meant for that you can put in a tape drive in the server. But I'm betting that we can put almost anything in that one. So where is the power for it? Down here is the CD-ROM drive. And that is also using a kind of a SATA connection. It's, it's this one, it's one of the older connections. Can you believe it? I've never had one of these up. Yeah, it's an old hard disk connection, the old IDE one. But it also needs power, and that is this connection. Actually, this little board co converts this old plug to a newer plug on the CD-ROM drive down here power goes in there and that is also fed through this connection over here but the power connection is under the fan assembly so I'm gonna take up all the fans and they just go up like that and down here is over here underneath this little pin is a power connector and it also says IDE power connector there but that's for the cd-rom drive i'm not gonna steal that i might need that so i'm gonna plug that on again but there's another one over here and that's also an ide power connector and this is the pin called j100 right there j100 is a four pin power connector um, it's not the normal thing that you find in any day computer stuff so it's a little bit hard to come by to find something that will plug in there so I need a power connector that will go in there and I thought I had one uh, I found this one uh, it's, it's very often on on regular power supplies they will have an outtake like this but it's not the same as this one we see those two connections one of them is considerably bigger than the other one so this one will not work and what you can see there is that there is a two hour break in this video because I have been roaming through all my stuff to find a connector like this and I did I found a connector actually also two of them and that plug is exactly the same 
and if you need a plug like this this is the sound connector from an old cd-rom drive back when you built your own computers and you wanted the sound to go from your cd-rom drive and down to your sound blaster card this would be the wire that did it and this is the plugs and those plugs they connect in here like so cool so now what i need to do is actually just figure out to make this connector fit on something like not that one like this one from a hard drive so this is the connector coming out of a hard drive and i think i will replace this device just cut the leads off here and put those wires into this little thing i just need to find out how they go in there i think i will have to power up the server and measure what voltage comes out of the clocks so i powered up the server and i made a made a copy of the little plug this is supposed to be this one so that i can put on what voltage i'm measuring now the server is trying to boot and stuff like that doesn't matter i'm just gonna measure this out i measured this out and i found that let's just hold the connection like this out here is five volts right where the red wire is then there are the middle two are grounded and this one out here on the right is 12 volts and that's not the same as the hard drive there the cables are mixed up a little bit differently we have 12 volts here that's yellow wire then we have the black wire which is ground we have the red wire which is 5 volts and we have another ground the black wire so i'll have to mix up the wires i do think i want to make a cable that can do both so so maybe I'll take off this connector instead. Well, so I came down here to solder this. Um, I took off the plug uh, on one end. I've already cut one of the leads off. Um, it's very easy. You take a, a pointy thing and you press down these metal levers or what they are called and these goes and they come out of this plug. You have to bend them up again before you put them back in. These are all alike so when i put them on i don't have to worry about which one goes on which one i will do that when i plug them in i've already removed this plug from this cable so and i have soldered a little bit of tin on each of these and i was about to solder the first one here let's just do this together just give this a little bit Just, I was planning on putting on the red one here. There we are. I've sorted all these fine small connections and I've also bent up the little metal piece right there so that it should snatch onto the plug when I put it back in. So this goes like this, so that tells me that the red one has to go in here. It's going to be a tight fit. So after quite a bit of mingling around trying to get these connections in, I finally did it. And they're in there pretty good. I think this is good. I'm going to plug it in and see what happens. Actually, I'll just do a just to make sure that it's not short circuited before I do that. Just gonna check 12 volt, the short circuit alert, nothing there. Five volts, not short circuit either. I don't know if the ground, even the ground is not short circuited. So we're gonna plug in the cable and I'm gonna check the voltage um, out here to check if there is the expected voltages. cable is in and I've plugged this one in over here as well so now we can put down the the fan assembly we will probably... so let's power this beast up power up 
power on. Let's see what voltage we got. We should have 12 volts on this one. Oh, that's buttons. Yeah, we have 12 volts. And we should have 5 volts on this one over here. Yeah, 5 volts. And we should have 0 volts between the grounds. Yeah, it's good to go. So. I'm gonna take this little hot drive and I'm gonna connect it and see if the smoke comes out everywhere. Nah, this is probably not hot pluggable. We'll turn this off. And then we connect it. There we are. I also have a SATA cable here. And then we power it on again. And there is no chance in hell that I should be able to hear that little hot drive. It's a good question if that runs or not. It feels like it's moving. I guess there's only one way to find out, and that is to bring it out into a working server and see what happens. Out here in the data center, I just disconnected number nine here. We're gonna try and put this drive in this one just because it's the lowest one and the easiest one to work with. So I'll plug that in here. And have the drive go over there. Plug the fan assembly back in. Very nice. Maybe we should have had this cable in. So I have the little hot drive sitting here. The cables are just long enough. So I took the SATA cable from over here and I'll put it under the fan assembly and it comes out down here and goes up into the hot drive like that. So, and it's not there very good. It could go and short circuit stuff. So um, I'm gonna be careful. I'm gonna put the LED back on and put the server back in the rack. server is back, so let's see if we can power it on. And what happens? I think I'll disconnect the hot drive that is in the server. Who knows, there might be a window or something on that drive. Well, it did not find the the booting operating system right away so we're gonna continue and it was complaining about some memory uh, can't remember why it did that continue let's see if we can see that drive there 160 gigabytes cool maybe we just need to set that as a boot device startup options maybe startup sequence Hot drive zero. Hot drive. Okay, probably just need to reboot it again. Okay, it's actually trying to boot some kind of probably a Windows XP right there. That's gonna fail miserably. But well, it's definitely using the little hot drive that is inside of the server now. So, so this is a success, even though, yeah, now it's repairing all kind of stuff. But well, never mind. Yeah, if you are in any kind of environment where your production is important, this is probably not the way to go. This is not the way to impress your boss. I wouldn't do it like that. I would go and find the cable. There is a cable available actually. I found it on eBay. I'll put a link to it. Maybe it's available on Amazon. I haven't checked that. But a cable is available for tape backup. In a production environment, I would buy the real cable because this is dodgy. Those cables wasn't easy to get in there, I can tell you that. But um, well, we got this working. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me do other crazy stuff. 
visit me over at Google Plus where I occasionally post a picture of what I'm up to and doing. I think I'll go take a picture of this and just put it on Google Plus and everybody can see that I have this running and everybody is going to be so envious. Maybe. <laughs> so have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you.